miracle of life continues beyond inception and birth. And each new day, the wonder of our creation is seen as the human body works at restoration healing. Go with us on a journey of discovery. Learn how you can enjoy an abundant life, living in harmony with the divine laws of nature and healing. Join Danny Vieira and Judy Lawson in Adventures in Health. This week's presentation is titled Women's Health. Welcome to Adventures in Health. I'm Junie Lawson with Whitehorse Media. This is my friend Danny Vieira, Director of Modern Mana Ministries and the Bella Vida Lifestyle Center. Danny, our program today is titled Women's Health. And um, I want to mention that I think the men should not turn off the TV but stand <laughs> by because even while we'll be discussing women's mm -hmm. health issues, um, as you and I talked about earlier, when the women, woman is healthy and happy, then the mm -hmm. man's going to be happy too. So there may be mm -hmm. some things here that he can learn. And also some of the younger, the young ladies, there might be some things to learn too. Um, I want to start by sharing a personal experience sure. because we're going to be discussing hormonal issues. Mm -hmm. And being a woman, I've had some of those. <laughs> Uh, a number of years ago, I, my body went early into menopausal mm -hmm. symptoms and I was having the typical hot flashes, but a lot of depression and just crying for no reason. And of course, Charles was probably as, just about as frustrated as I was. And so finally I went to the doctor who um, offered me hormone replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. But I had read some things about hormone replacement therapy and I was a little concerned to move forward with that. So I said, well, we'll, we'll wait and see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I began to pray about it. Charles and I prayed about it and we were just searching for some, there must be something natural that I could do. And finally, we believe God did lead us mm -hmm. to something. I found a, a natural product of phytoestrogen. And that wasn't the end of the mm -hmm. road. You know, mm -hmm. that was the beginning for me. But I know that there are so many women mm -hmm. out there who struggle with hormone imbalance and deficiencies. And menopause, it's like, um, it, it's, 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 a, it's as if it's a disease. Right. But, but it's not a disease, is it? I don't think so. I, I always tell women this isn't a disease this is a natural occurrence in your life that's saying you're beyond the childbearing years yeah. right and so i try to educate women that that don't look at it as, as something seriously wrong with you this is a natural occurrence of life so we begin to try to educate them that there are natural things that they can do just as you found out as opposed to maybe taking premarin or some other that hormone product that the doctor might prescribe. Mm -hmm. And would you agree with me that if there are men watching uh, and their wives are, are struggling and going through mm -hmm. depression seemingly for no reason, that it might be wise for the man to encourage their wife to check out their hormones? I say run and tell your wife to come in here and listen to this program today because you both will be happier people. Mm -hmm. yes. That's right. And so it is something that many mm -hmm. women struggle with, although I've read that in other countries, mm. um, the women don't struggle with menopause as much as they do here. Well, I think we're going to probably cover the reason why in okay. this show today mm -hmm. that I think that much of the imbalance in the hormones that we're seeing in women in the, the menopausal you know, state, that it's caused by their dietary habits. It's caused by the things they're putting on their body and in their body, and, okay. and they're creating an imbalance. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, let's start today too with what are some of the symptoms? You mentioned mm -hmm. hot flashes, Judy. Hot flashes. And, and I wrote down some symptoms here that are, are usually the, the, the most common symptoms that you're gonna see, such as breast pain, hair loss, there's a okay. big one. Uh, hot flashes, as you mentioned. Irregular bleeding, okay? You'll right. see profuse mm -hmm. menstruation or they're spotting and they're not having their mm -hmm. menses normally. Migraine headaches, that's a big one, is headaches, all right? Uh, mood changes, and that's where the men can really be benefited by mm -hmm. today's show, sure. right? Night sweats, sexual problems, again, mm -hmm. it's gonna affect perhaps the marriage. Skin problems, sleep disturbances, and vaginal dryness. Yes. So you can, you know, it's interesting to me that, you know, if you're getting a headache or a migraine or you're finding your mood, you know, you're being irrational or, or you're crying and, and you wonder why, that this is associated to menopause, our mm -hmm. hormone imbalance today. Mm -hmm. so, so I think this is a good place for us to start is identifying the symptoms that you and other women are associating, you okay. know, with this type of 
time in your life and what we can do naturally to help All right. assist you. Um, now, also, we know that, uh, like I experienced when I went to the doctor, they offered me hormone replacement mm -hmm. therapy. Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts well, on Well, you know, I, I brought with me today a study that was done that shocked the United States. Mm -hmm. I believe it shocked the medical profession because here doctors had been routinely prescribing Premarin. Now Premarin is an issue in itself because it's from the urine of a pregnant horse and that's where you get the name mare, you know, pre-mare. And, and it's, it was causing some problems that they weren't aware of. In fact, they were going to do a great study here, the largest study to date on hormone replacement. And this is taken from the Stanford report okay. and it's July 10th 2002 so we're looking at six years ago roughly but it says that this hormone replacement therapy study was abruptly halted so here the doctors are checking out you know here's the prescription we're using here's the progesterone and the estrogen um, drugs that we're using and and something happened that they needed to stop the study I believe it was like three years early and here's what it says. In the largest study to date on hormone replacement, researchers have found clear evidence that healthy postmenopausal women who take estrogen combined with progestin have a greater risk of breast cancer, heart attack, stroke, and blood clots within five years of starting the hormones. The study results were so compelling that the National Institutes of Health sponsored for, of the national trial, abruptly halted the estrogen progestin trial this week more than three years before the scheduled event, and, um, the end of the program. And it says here, this is a definitive evidence that estrogen plus progestin does not prevent heart disease and in fact increases the risk of heart disease. Yeah. Now, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Here you're trying to balance your hormones sure. and take care of the hot flashes and the headaches and the mood swings and you're setting yourself up for greater breast cancer mm -hmm. and heart attack. Okay, there's another argument about drug medication, mm -hmm. all right? And that's not what, where women want to go. Not at all, and I think that's what propelled mm -hmm. you to go look yes. for a natural alternative. So it says here, it says, the hormone studies, part of the Women's Health Initiative, this was the study, involved more than 27,000 women at 40 sites around the country. Some 4,500 women are participating in a range of the Women's Health Initiative studies at Stanford, including more than 700 in hormone trials. In the estrogen progesterone study, 16,608 healthy women between ages 50 and 79 were ran randomly assigned to take a daily dose of either the hormone or a placebo. And as we said, blood clots, higher risk of heart attacks, more breast cancer, and they abruptly halt this study and say, and, and I remember, I remember this on the news and maybe you do too, that, that women were in crisis. Yeah. What do we do now? Thank you. <laughs> what do we do now? And they're turning to their doctors. First they feel like, what have you been giving me this <laughs> for? And then they're crashing back into the hot flashes and the night sweats. And, and now they're thinking, what's the trade off this with cancer? And, and, and when you do deal with cancer and, and of the reproductive organs and let, let's pinpoint breast cancer, you know, when they do biopsies and they come back and they say this is estrogen receptive cancer, these cells are estrogen receptive. In other words, they're taking up the estrogen and estrogen, I always think of it like gasoline for cancer. It fuels cancer. So the more estrogen, the more breast cancer. All right, so mm -hmm. here we're finding that, that doctors and Stanford's come out and said, we've been giving you something that's actually been pretty deadly to you and we need to look at an option. Then I remember that they started to come out and say, well, you gotta take some, so I think they were talking about lesser dosages and, and you need to get some of these hormones and be, continually be monitored by your medical doctor to see that there's any early signs, stages, or any of these side effects, but women were scared. Sure, so if our hormones are imbalanced, which is the case when we start mm -hmm. moving into menopause, is there something that a woman can do to balance her hormones without yes. actually taking estrogen? Yes, there are plant estrogens such as you found yourself. Mm -hmm. And when I was studying about, the, the big one that came out was soy. Soy, 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 soy. Soy was high in 
phytoestrogen, plant-based estrogen. And they were showing that this estrogen is so much weaker in its effect than estradiol or an animal-based estrogen, and therefore it's not gonna be as conducive to promoting cancer. However, today, they're saying when women have estrogen receptive positive cancer, don't even use the soy because it's too high in estrogen still. So all right? even the soy could feed the cancer. That's the concern. And I'd say perhaps the jury's out on that because right. there's other people that will argue there's, there's phytochemicals in soy like genistein that has shown benefits against breast cancer, mm -hmm. let's say. So let's say the jury's out on that. I say don't use it. Mm -hmm. That's my personal conviction. And, and you've talked about, in, in each program, you've talked about starting with balancing the diet. Hey, Junie, exactly. I think that's more important than any supplements you take naturally mm -hmm. or prescription. So how, how could a woman, you know, going through menopause or starting into it, what, how would she balance her diet that would benefit her? <laughs> right. Well, what you want to remember is, first of all, I did, I did two, about probably four or five radio shows with Dr. John Lee. He's a medical doctor that was very very much involved in educating women about what they could do naturally. And he was a big proponent of, uh, he, he pushed progesterone cream all the time. In fact, we had him come speak at one of our health and healing crusades, and he was talking about progesterone and how so many women are deficient. Well, talking about diet, like you've just asked, I believe that that is probably the number one cause of all this hormone imbalance. Mm. There's progesterone, there's estrogen, and there's testosterone. And women have high amounts of estrogen. Well, where are they getting it? Okay, that wasn't God's intent when he created mm -hmm. woman in the Garden of Eden. And I believe when you start looking at the foods that are high in estrogen, specifically animal products are very high in animal estrogens. Dairy products are very high in estrogens. So we're consuming women are consuming large amounts of estrogen. Now couple that with birth control pills. And then there's another mm -hmm. form of estrogens. Guess where that comes from? The xenoestrogens. Explain a little bit what you found out. Well, I, I had an in interesting experience. <laughs> yeah, not, not so long ago, actually, I started having some vaginal bleeding mm -hmm. and that hadn't been an issue for me for quite some time. So after a little while, I decided I should check that out. Mm -hmm. Went to the doctor, had all the tests, everything came back negative, for which I was mm -hmm. thankful. But at the end of the day, I said to my doctor, so what caused this? Mm -hmm. And she said, you need to watch your xenoestrogens. And I said, what's that? I didn't know. And so I began to research what xenoestrogens were. And uh, in all kinds of things, mm -hmm. there are xenoestrogens, things that chemicals that affect our body as though right. they are estrogen. They're, um, they're, they mimic estrogen yeah. in, 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 a, in a synthetic form. Yes. And the plant, so, they also refer to it as chemical estrogen. Yeah, and that, by the way, that word is spelled with an X. Yeah. <laughs> X-E-N-O, for those who might want to do yeah. the research. And so we, we really do need to be aware of where these um, mm -hmm. mimicking estrogens are coming from and, and impacting our bodies. And some of the sources that you learned did you find plastic? Yes, plastic, <laughs> and in particular, one of the things would be like water bottles, yes. which is a habit, you know, mm -hmm. for many of us. Water bottles, if the plastic, if the chemicals leach mm -hmm. into the water, and I found in lotions, and mm -hmm. there are things called parabens in lotions, and in shampoos, and, and a lot of things. Dioxins, and, mm -hmm. and I was reading where they were incinerating, you know, things from the hospital that they use and these xenoestrogens are in mm -hmm. there and these dioxins and very cancer-causing agents. But you know, I, I also read something recently where they were talking about the the liquids in in plastic when you freeze them mm -hmm. leaching into the food you're okay. going to consume or the drink. Uh -huh. So so in summary, there's there's estrogens we're getting from animal foods. Mm -hmm. There's estrogens we're getting from chemical bases and plastics and things that we're using routinely around our house. Even they can be in your perfumes or in your cosmetics. Yes. And I was talking to Dr. John Lee too. And I said, why are we seeing such high estrogen in women today that's conducive to more ovarian, more cervical, more vaginal, more breast cancers today? And he said, well, they're getting it even in their junk foods. Mm. 
Okay, so the more junk food you're eating, coupled with the animal products, with the synthetic chemical things you're using in and on your body, we're seeing high amounts of estrogen, high ratio of estrogen. So what happens? He coined a word, and, and probably many of you have heard it now, it's called estrogen dominance. So here you have a ratio of estrogen, one hormone that the women have, progesterone, and testosterone, but when you increase the estrogen, your ratio's now abnormal. And so you're getting a dominant effect of just estrogen that fuels the cancer. And, and they, they found in the Philippines. I, I read of a study, and I think it was Diet for the New America by John Robbins, where medical doctors were finding, actually in the Philippines, that young children, and eight years old and younger, were developing breasts, the women and pubic hairs and in their general areas. And, the, and finally, one doctor traced it to dairy. And when they removed the dairy out of the diet of those children, the breasts went back to normal mm -hmm. size, the pubic hair stopped having. So it was bringing on it was bringing on early onset puberty, and how's that gonna affect menstruation? How's that gonna affect cancer? Okay, the earlier the menstrual cycle starts, the higher the chance of breast cancer. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Today's DVD offer, the McDougal Program for Women, provides sound medical advice on health issues facing women today. Order your copy of the McDougal Program for Women for only $15. Ask for offer 110 when you write or call. Order now by calling 1-800-655-3228. That's 1-800-655-3228. Or write to Modern Man of Ministries, 519 South Central Avenue, Lodi, California, 95240. The Truth About Menopause is a powerful DVD presentation by the late Dr. John Lee on natural alternatives for menopause. Learn what over-the-counter remedies you can use to reduce menopausal symptoms. Order The Truth About Menopause for only $15 by calling 1-800-655-3228. That's 1-800-655-3228. Or write to Modern Man of Ministries, 519 South Central Avenue, Lodi, California, 95240. Now back to Adventures in Health. Okay, the earlier the menstrual cycle starts, the higher the chance of breast cancer because you're getting more estrogen produced in the body so, or into the body. I know that from we, a young age. we talked about this before, but the, the eating of the animal food mm -hmm. and the dairy, how is it exactly that those things affect such well, a that's high a estrogen? Well, that's a great level. question. I think today, because many of them are fed estrogens to increase growth. Mm -hmm. Think of the chicken. What part of the chicken do people typically eat? The breast, mm -hmm. right? And the turkey, okay? And when you feed more estrogen to these animals, larger breasts. In fact, there was an article that came out in the Lodi paper that mm -hmm. said at Thanksgiving that these turkeys their legs were giving out because they couldn't hold the weight of their own bodies anymore because of so much hormone. The breasts were so large that they were collapsing. So what happens when you're eating animals fed ex excessive estrogen to cause more growth, specifically breast development, and you're a woman eating these birds with that estrogen? Hello? You're getting it indirectly. Indirectly, mm -hmm. and it's affecting your breast. Mm -hmm. All right, that's why all these estrogen-related cancers today is specifically in the breast in women. Mm -hmm. So animal products, you know, I don't like them. And, and, and there's another question, what about hormone-free? Okay, well, it doesn't have the estrogen, Danny. Is that safe for me to oh, take today? Sure, the animals that aren't fed the hormone. Very, very popular right now mm -hmm. in health food stores and whole foods you know, markets where there's hormone-free beef. Even, mm -hmm. even there's a fast food place that we'll go eat at Chipotle's and they'll say hormone-free beef, okay? I like the answer that I received from Dr. Schultz one day when he says, I don't care if it's hormone-free or not. You got a 2,000-pound animal, you weigh 135 pounds or 125 pounds. The hormone concentration or the hormones in that animal are far higher than they are in your body. So to eat the animal with its hormones is going to only increase your hormones regardless if it's hormone-free. So animal foods can increase 
hormones. And then that takes me back to my earlier question of women in other countries who don't seem to have the issues of the breast cancer and right. the hormone problems like we have, would you say that's because of their diet? I believe it's, it, it's a strong possibility that is the reason. Mm -hmm. Just as you see less cancers of the breast, you, less colon cancer, less prostate cancer, let's say in the rural Chinese, less obesity, more obesity, more estrogen, more fat cells, more estrogen, more fuel for cancer. Mm -hmm. So let's say, where should you start to, to balance your hormones is in your diet. Eat more of a whole plant-based diet. Get off the animal foods and the dairy products and especially estrogen-fed animals. Sure. Or you're setting yourself up for cancer. Okay, well, once you've taken that first step and you're still having some issues, are there some mm -hmm. natural things that you can do? Yes, there are. And I think that's where, first of all, what I do with women is educate them in regards to diet and exercise. Okay, correct all the foundation program okay. again. Okay, I've seen infertility, I've seen premenstrual syndromes, I've seen postmenstrual syndrome, everything improves. Women that are infertile just from cleansing and eating the proper diet, getting off all the estrogens from animal foods, they have children, all right? I've watched this over mm -hmm. and over, and, and I think there's some herbs that you can use for natural hormone replacement, just as it says that you, you used. And, and so I look for products, and, and in health food stores today, there's, they're a dime a dozen. Hot <laughs> flash, you know, and, and transitions. Here's one called transition herbs for menopause. Mm -hmm. But I think what these products have in common is that there are certain herbs in here that can help balance hormone, hormone-like effects estrogen-like substances like with the soy, but maybe not as high as soy. So one of them that's very popular today as a hormone or an estrogen replacement is black cohosh. All right, and this product, the number one ingredient here is hesperidin, then burdock, chase tree. It has um, gamma, or gamma arisinol in here, motherwort, dong quai, black cohosh. It has um, wild yam root. And these are many of the herbs that people are familiar with today yes. for hormone. Mm -hmm. So what if I take a plant from nature that gives me estrogen properties that are lower dosages, even chaseberry, otherwise known as Vitex, can balance hormone. So you balance your hormones and then you will see that these symptoms can improve just as you found. You got right. phytoestrogen. So my first thing is correct the diet and the lifestyle. Secondly, try to balance your own hormones rather than going on a hormone, even if it's progesterone. But I think there are issues that we need to look at like bone loss and things of that mm -hmm. nature. So that's why I look for a product for women to start with that's designed with herbs specifically for menopausal symptoms. How is bone loss tied in with this? Well, when you have a deficiency in estrogen, in the endocrine system, in the progesterone, you, your bones aren't absorbing the calcium that it needs to. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think that when you get into a, um, something that's going to help build bones, there's different calcium magnesium supplements in there with boron. And boron is very important today for you to absorb the calcium and to get it into the system. Like, like this was a product that I grabbed for reference today, Profema the menopausal multiple that has all the vitamins and minerals and the herbs in this bottle so that women only open one bottle to get their vitamins and their herbs for their menopause mm, that's nice. in one. I mm -hmm. think that's very good. And, and so these are powerful. Then there's herbal products. This is female formula I found that says dong quai, black cohosh, wild yam root, chase tree berry, cramp bark. That's gonna help with premenstrual cramp. Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> that reminds me of something you mentioned earlier that um, sometimes when women are just premenstrual, they start mm -hmm. craving chocolate. Yeah, <laughs> I had read one report that said it was the magnesium that they needed oh. because they're such a draw of magnesium and calcium at this time of their menstrual cycle when they're going to shed, you know, and bleed. Uh -huh. That that and magnesium's for relaxing muscle. So my daughter would come home with her friends and she'd say she's having her cycle. Dad, is there anything you can give her? And I'd say, well, tell her to take some magnesium. Ask her if she's craving chocolate, you know. Uh -huh. And so magnesium's a muscle relaxant. So magnesium's very important oh. in premenstrual. 
That's an interesting hit. Yeah. For... And nourish the children. Mm -hmm. Nourish these young people. I think with all the junk food, the mineral mm -hmm. imbalance, the high protein diet, the high estrogen dominance, low progesterone, um, no wonder they're, they're um, you know, suffering and, and become, you know, emotionally, um, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, um, we talked about breast cancer mm -hmm. and um, I know we don't have a lot of time left, but what can you tell us about what we can do to prevent breast you cancer? You know, that's a great question there. You know, there's estrogen receptive positive cancers. Get off the animal foods, number one. Okay. Don't eat so much animal food. I mean, I'm, I eat a plant-based diet, so I stay away from animal foods. I think women are smart too in a day and that we're living in today. There's a, other things on the market. Here's a product from Life Extension, Dual Action Cruciferous Vegetable Extract. It's an estrogen blocker. So right. yeah, tamoxifen is an estrogen blocker, throws people and women in the hot flashes and all these symptoms. This is a less aggressive way to block estrogen and it's coming from broccoli and cat's claw and um, other watercress and different plants. So I would eat a high plant-based diet, get rid of the animal foods and the dairy products, start exercising, and maybe take a product that's going to balance and nourish your reproductive system. Hmm. That's this wonderful <laughs> counsel. Now, um, now we are down to the last <laughs> little bit of this program, and mm -hmm. so I'd like you to talk to the viewers and yeah. just you. share your final thoughts on this program of women's health. Well, I've seen a lot of women these days with, with breast cancer and I'm very, very concerned. And, and the reports typically come back, estrogen receptive cancers. That means that they're eating and getting too much estrogen in their diets. Birth control pills is another issue, fooling the body, you're pregnant all the time. And this excess estrogen is feeding and fueling cancer. So I think that women need to be especially aware of that. And also that Premarin, based on the Stanford report, isn't the best choice. So look for an alternative herbal product, perhaps, that's going to help balance your hormones, nourish your reproductive system, and see if you get relief. There's a product I, I learned about called um, Femtrol, F-E-M-T-R-O-L, from Enzymatic Therapy, a company that's available in health food stores that I've helped a lot of premenstrual problems within young girls and also balancing their hormones. Sometimes they have profuse menstruation or not enough bleeding and, and this helps satisfy that and fix that too. So, I know that uh, you could share for another hour on this subject and we'd love to hear it. But we want to thank you for joining us today and I hope you've learned some great things regarding to women's health. Don't forget to join us for our next program, Attitude and Healing Part 1.